What's up everybody, this is Gray here, and today we're going to look at a 50 gallon grow bag. Uh, <laughs> it's quite interesting to say the least. Uh, this is my first attempt using a bag of this size. As you guys can see behind me, I do a lot of grow bag gardening or urban homesteading per se, right? So what I wanted to do is A, I wanted to show you what I've done with this 50 gallon grow bag uh, and get some of your input, of course. Uh, second, I have a second 50 gallon grow bag, which I'm going to do something interactive with you, the viewers, uh, because it should be an idea that we put together ourselves. And uh, once we get to that 50 gallon grow bag and I show you what's in it and what I did, uh, we're also going to do a quick little garden tour uh, of what's behind me, what I got growing, because a lot of you guys seen, uh, and some of you guys are still frozen out. Uh, some people say it's still snowing in certain areas in the northern regions of the United States and haven't been able to get growing yet. So I'd like to show you what I've got growing here. Uh, and this is, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, what does I want to say? I don't know if I want to do a video clip or just a picture that I'll throw up on the screen now. And you can see there that I really don't have much four weeks ago. So here we are four weeks later, roughly I say about five weeks to be totally honest with you. And uh, these are all the plants that we've planted. Uh, majority of them were from seeds uh, and also some, uh, some seedlings that we've had before and some that we've also purchased uh, from the store as little plants. And they have, of course, gone wild. Here in the Florida climate and zone 9B specifically, uh, we do have a pretty uh, robust growing season. But there's also some drawbacks to it in where my garden is right now. You, you know, they always say you want to get full sun on a lot of different plants. Uh, which is usually six to eight hours. The problem I have is I have no shade in this area uh, other than when it's cloudy, which is awesome because the clouds are right now, but I'm pretty sure you'll see the sun break through no time. It is probably roughly 85 some degrees out here in Florida, uh, at least in my area. But uh, what I wanted to bring that attention is they get, they're getting a roughly 10 to 12 hours of sun. So I had to be very careful on my watering techniques. Also, you know, the bugs are starting to come out, of course. So we're dealing with uh, uh, we've dealt with some aphids already. We've dealt with these. I forget what the little green worms are. They, they kind of have like a little, it's almost like they have, they're, they're like a spider worm is what I call them. Because when you spray them with the neem oil, they kind of drop down and have like this little thing and they all start scattering. But we've learned how to deal with them with some other uh, components organically outside of using some sort of extreme uh, harmful pesticides that are harmful to like the bees uh, and stuff like that. And I do have a treat coming up for you, but I'm going to save that as a surprise. Uh, something that we're going to introduce into the garden uh, that will be pretty fun. My daughter's really excited about it as well. All right, so enough of me talking. Let's get over to the 50-gallon grow bag. Okay, folks, so this is the 50-gallon grow bag that we're using currently right here. And what you're seeing is I'm going to back up a little bit here so you can kind of get a gauge of the size of this grow bag. It's, it's pretty pretty huge to say the least, <laughs> funny enough, but has a decent height on it and you can kind of see there. So what do we have growing in here? So let me point some of this stuff out to you. So basically all these things that you see around here, those are all different types of peppers. Uh, we have uh, red bell, green bell, uh, we have like a, I don't wanna say black bell, but we have candy cane. Uh, I think one of them is the Tabasco heirloom uh, pepper. And there's several others. Basically, this is like my uh, pepper bag. And what I did in the center here to get kind of close in is I put these guys in here to attract my pollinators, which is my bees. Bees love purple. You know what I mean? And I did this to, uh, for, for other reasons too, because butterflies and stuff like that. But bees really love purple flowers. And the reason that is because of the way their vision is. So purple is a huge thing for bees. And uh, in the morning, you'll see tons and tons of bees uh, sitting over here, you know, playing around the flowers and hopefully it will do some pollinating for me, uh, which will be save me a lot of work. But anyways, that's the 50 gallon bag there. So I'm going to back up a little bit and kind of show you the size. And if you look at some of the 10 gallon bags that I have, you can see how small they are in comparison to that. Like I said, this is 50 gallons. Now what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm also going to show you how I did this on a different video ask, after I ask you guys what you guys would like me to grow. And there's gonna be three options for this. All right, so let's cut back to me and have this quick discussion. Okay, so uh, so now that we saw that 50 gallon uh, grow bag that's sitting over here, 
Uh, here's what I want to ask you, the viewers. I want to give you guys three options, and if you can do this, you can put this down in the comments, and I would truly appreciate it. So here are three of my ideas, and we're going to do this together. We're going to go step by step and do this together uh, so that you guys can see each individual process. Now, that being said, I have showed you how I do my grow bags. I'll put that video up here so that you can see it if you want to reference it, how I build out some of these grow bags uh, to save you money on soil and also to amend your soil properly uh, so you can see the way I do it. And you guys can kind of see the idea of what I got going on here, which will follow up with the garden tour here in a few seconds or a minute or so, right? So anyways, I either want to get one of these three options and I want you guys to choose out of these three. One, do we want to do a herb garden in the next 50 gallon grow bag? And basically when we, de when we develop these bags, I'm going to show you from the opening the bag to the layering, to what I'm putting in it, to what kind of soil and uh, compost and nutrients and all that stuff like that. I'm going to show you that entire process in that video. Uh, but you guys, some of you guys have an idea how I do the small bags. Now we'll look at how I did the big bags. But back to what I was saying. So you guys are going to have three options. What would you like me to see do with the next 50 gallon grow bag? Would you like to see a herb garden? Basically stuff like dill, basil, cilantro, uh, I have rosemary. Um, and things of that nature. You guys can kind of uh, throw some ideas out there. We'll talk about it on tomorrow night's live stream. Uh, we can uh, throw some ideas there as well. And uh, what do we want to grow if we're going to decide to go a herb garden? Now, here's the other option. We can grow potatoes. We'll grow white potatoes. I've never grown white potatoes before. Your standard Idaho potato, whatever you want to call it. We can try to grow some spuds in this 50 gallon grow bag. If you guys want to see that, you can put that down in the comments. Or do you want me to see me grow some corn? Uh, we can either try, we can try different varieties of corn. We can try some sweet corn. Uh, we can try to, uh, I think I might have having some blue corn. I do have a lot of different seeds in my seed bank uh, so that I have something options to choose from. So if you would like to see a herb garden, a uh, potato garden per se, and, uh, or a uh, corn. So if you want corn, potato, or herbs, you let me know down in the comment section what would you like to see uh, in this next 50 gallon grow bag and here's the funny thing folks this is going to be an experiment for you and something that you're going to be able to take a look at because uh, some of you guys are thinking should I start with a three gallon five gallon ten gallon 25 gallon 50 gallon I mean these grow bags go up to a hundred gallons right uh, and what I've noticed about this grow bag is I don't have to water it as much because there's more soil so there's more nutrients there's more moisture uh, the roots are going to have more room, uh, and uh, even with all the peppers that I have in there, they're going to have a lot more room to go down and out. Uh, basically, they're about 12 inches apart in this grow bag uh, outside of the centerpiece for my pollinator plants that I have in there. So you can actually pack a lot of stuff in these grow bags, but you want to do it cost effectively. You don't want to put nothing but really good soil in there because then it'll cost you an arm and a leg. So we'll go and dive into that. You be the judge what we grow in this next 50 gallon grow bag, and we'll do an entire video dedicated to you, the viewers, uh, or basically the, uh, we'll tally up uh, all the comments and see what was gonna be, what was chosen, and then I'll, of course I'll announce that in that live, in any live stream, uh, or in the community tab, or whatnot. All right, enough of me rambling on, right? You guys wanna see the garden. You guys wanna see what I got growing, and uh, some things are kind of ready for harvest even. It's like I said, it's been under six weeks. It's only been four to five weeks since we started this garden and it's starting to be heavy producers. And I'm not done yet, folks. I have all this room here. I have all the room back there. We have a lot of stuff to plant. And I wanna show you how resilient plants can be. Uh, bok choy, you know what I mean? Uh, we grew bok choy last year. We actually have some bok choy seedlings growing back in the, in the shade house. And uh, we're gonna plant some more this year, but I'm gonna show you one of my bok choys, uh, one of the seeds, uh, when the bok choy, we let it flower and then dr and dried it out, uh, one of the seeds fell in a spot and started to grow directly in Florida soil. And I wanna show that to you guys as well. All right, so let's get into this garden tour. All right, folks. So remember, if you saw my last garden video about four or five weeks ago, you notice a lot of changes have happened in the garden. And you see, we still have all that area to go over there and don't forget my sweet potato experiment that's hanging out right over here. And as you can see, if you remember it last time, it was uh, a lot different. 
Now I'm going to try to get this camera to come in close here, but also remember I threw a strawberry plant in here not too long ago either. And look at there, look at there. We have a strawberry. And it needs to grow a little bit more. Where else do we got in here? See if there's any more strawberries. I know the wife loves coming out here and picking them up. Yeah, we do got some more blooms here. But this is literally from one sweet potato. Now, will the strawberry plant keep on doing this? You know, will it keep on producing fruit? We'll see. But if you remember this, this was almost empty last time we looked at it. Moving on over here to this section, and I do apologize about my shadow, but it is afternoon time and the sun is coming down. These here, let me try to back up a little bit. Those three plants here that are coming across right there, those are all purple hall peas. And if you remember, I only had the one from last year and now they have exploded. Look at these things, beans everywhere. And they are attaching themselves to this trellis that I had built for the Cherry 100 tomatoes. But we can get in close and look at these beans here. They're looking amazing and they're getting crazy. I'm trying to get my way through here. You see beans all over the place. And look at there. If you look at that one there, I don't know if you remember this, this plant here died off last year uh, and now it came back and that's the new bloom or what I call a bloom that popped up out of the ground and it's working with all these other plants here. Uh, we'll get to the plants back there in a second. Let's move over here to the Cherry 100s. These things have gone crazy and they're a very viney tomato. Um, so let me kind of explain this here so that you guys can kind of see. This is a Cherry 100. This is a black cherry and that is a Cherry 100. And of course you see I've got some companion plants down there. Some marigolds. Uh, I need to put some in here too because we did find uh, one worm on this plant, but we've got that squared away now. But it is a very viney plant, but it's producing tremendously. They all are doing pretty well. Let's get a close up. These are what the fruit look like up close. They're all different sizes. Some are bigger than others. As you can see back there, they're heavy producers. We can go up to the green ones. And like I said, this thing is just going, folks. It is just going. Now let's move over here to the black cherry. You can see some of them. That one started really early down there, but they have a bundle of tomatoes there too. And it's becoming a heavy producer as well. All the way up to the top. I'm giving it as much nutrients as I can. I want these things to produce tremendously so we can make some awesome salsa uh, this, <laughs> this summer. Anyways, and this is the other Cherry 100. We're coming down on this guy here, and you can see we got some harvesting to do, folks. We do got some harvesting to do of some of these tomatoes already, down with our marigolds. And like I said, this is coming all the way up. Now this over here, this is a standard uh, cherry tomato plant. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's producing heavily as well. I don't know how well this camera is going to be focusing on certain stuff. Hopefully it won't be too blurry for you folks. But yep, that guy is doing well too. And then my gorgeous, my gorgeous Japanese uh, eggplant here. I mean, look at this. This is awesome. Very awesome. Move that leaf there. And she's coming along nicely. We got plenty of fruit from her. All the way in the back there. And down there as well. Um, back there, um, I propagated a uh, strawberry from one of the tendrils off the strawberry. We'll see how that does. So far, it took to root. It's looking good, and that will be my third strawberry plant. What else do we got going on here? Then we have, it's kind of mixed in here. This is my heirloom tomato. I forget the name of it, to be honest with you. Uh, she is starting to produce flowers. I don't know if I can get in close to that there right around that area and right in this section there too she's starting to produce flowers so we'll see how she does we have a couple other this one I gotta add soil to that this one has gone crazy so I'm gonna bring soil I'm gonna take a bunch of these little pieces of here I'm gonna tear these off here and I'm going to fill it up with soil and let those roots do what they need to do over here as I back up this is our watermelon plant um, it's found its little tendrils there. It's found its way to the 
uh, the lat. I don't want to say lattice, but you guys get what I know what I'm saying. But if you look at all the tendrils, they have wrapped themselves around the fencing here. So this is our watermelon plant there. Funny enough, here's one of my uh, sunflowers. It's still a seedling. I'm getting ready to transplant that. And then we have a couple other tomato plants here that are growing. And we have lots of other stuff. I'm trying to go through a little quickly because I know you guys don't want to sit through a half hour of garden. Uh, these are our cucumbers. They're starting to grow well. They're finding their way up. If you see the leaves there, that's where we had the aphid problem. But we have now since resolved that. And the plant is coming back well. There's actually a flower hidden down there. So we will have some fruit coming soon. Flowers back there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But let me pull back out. And try to work my way out of these trellises that I built. And of course here is the 50 gallon again. With all these wonderful peppers. I'm so excited about this thing here. This is a heat master. Uh, this is a holdover from last year. And it just took off. It just took off. Now this is my wife's eggplant. I'm going to try to hold this camera steady as I possibly can. But it has these beautiful flowers that grow on it. She's already got fruit as well. I don't know if you guys can see that down here. I'm trying to get my hand down there. This is your standard Black Beauty eggplant that she has growing. And we've gotten lots of beautiful blooms on that. Sorry about the camera work sometimes. I'm not the best, but I'm trying to give you the best views that I possibly can of some of these plants. I'm going to back up here. What do we got here? So here, this is our second go. Last year didn't work out too, but this is Malabar spinach. I don't know if you can get close in there, but that's our Malabar spinach. There were little seedlings, and now they are getting nice and hardy. But that is our Malabar spinach. They kind of like a dry uh, dirt. They are very uh, heat tolerant and uh, drought tolerant. So these are pretty impressive. These are nice to have in Florida. And move over here. We're going to get into our berry section. Let me step over this stuff here. So here we have our strawberry. Now this strawberry is different than the other strawberry in the aspect that it's being grown differently. There's no blooms on it yet. I'm going to let this grow, get a little crazy before I cut it back and then let it uh, start to flower. Here's the amazing elderberry plant that was gifted to me as a cutting, and she is doing well. That's the elderberry there. Here's our beautiful blackberry bush. I'm keeping an eye on this one. It died off last year, we cut it back. As you can see, that, that's where I cut the stem at. And this is all the new growth this year uh, within the last four weeks. It's doing super healthy. And uh, I'm gonna keep on trimming it and letting it bush out. Hopefully we'll have some blackberries. This here is my freshly transplanted blueberry plant. She's the little girl there, but she will be doing just fine. She is doing well. Um, you know, during the colder times when I first bought it, it kind of uh, died back a little bit, but it's doing a lot better now. Moving over to here. This is an Inconetia. A lot of you folks know Inconetia has beautiful purple flowers on it. Um, it was very, very tiny when I first got it. It died a little bit, and then I brought it back to life, so it's looking good. I can't wait to see the beautiful flowers of the Inconetia plant uh, bloom. So I'm going to back up a bit so that you guys can see that section of the garden that we just went over. Now remember, this section here, this is a lot of this stuff. I'm trying to get my shadow out the way, but it doesn't look like it's going to work in the manner that I'm looking for. So this is one of our pepper plants, because we love peppers here. Uh, in our diet and uh, these are all looking good the peppers are coming they're all blooming they're getting there we got peppers all over the place and this one is a fresh bites orange pepper throw that back in there so my wife doesn't kill me but that's that one there I'm not sure what she has in here I can't tell what it is it looks like she has something growing in there she's trying to give it a give it life back to it there's our famous rosemary then we have our lavender. Now lavender has its medicinal purposes as well, but it's also a great pollinator because of the purple buds on it. Bees love lavender as well. So some lavender tea, some lavender oils. There's so much things you can do with lavender. 
This was just one of my favorite plants that I found and it's consistently blooming and it's a great uh, to bring in the pollinators as well. Now, here's where we're gonna get into an issue. Because <laughs> these are my wife's, some of the seedlings that she has going on. I know these are Thai chili peppers. She has those growing there. Because this is like our little, uh, after they've gotten a little stronger, we bring them out and introduce them into the sun in the section. So these are relatively new and they're starting to come through. Now these are some more pollinator plants here. That one was Little Miss Grace, but she doesn't take care of her plant, so I don't know. Uh, this one only blooms in the morning and then it dies off in the afternoon. As you can see, this is another holdover from last year, but outside of the basil, it's still fruiting. So I'm gonna let it do what it's doing. Some people are like, man, is he ever gonna stop? <laughs> Well, I'm trying to get through this entire garden with you guys. Uh, these are some more peppers here that we have on here. Um, and here's an oddball thing. This was a pepper plant from last year, which still has a bloom on it. Uh, but somehow a tomato plant is growing out of the bottom. We have yet to figure out how that happened. Um, this is <laughs> the wife's dragon kale experiment. The aphids tore this thing up. The worms tore it up. It's gone through heck and back. We don't know what's gonna happen with it, but we'll keep an eye on it. Another pepper plant there. And like I said, these are a couple of last year's holdovers. And I'm gonna back up to my gorgeous banana plant. This is a dwarf banana. And they usually take about a year or two to, uh, to uh, bear fruit. Now, I'm gonna do a video on these guys. We're going to propagate and create three or four more banana trees out of this one plant that we got last year but she is doing well some people say well what is that yellow that's just natural for banana plants i don't know if you guys can see that I'm trying to back up as best as i can it is very windy today we still got some carrots that we got to pull down there a couple other little holdouts from last year and i think she has some holdouts over here from last year as well these are you know basically the wife if she still sees it's bearing fruit uh, she's going to, uh, or you know, vegetable, fruit, whatever you like to call it, she's going to keep them around. You guys remember the broccoli? This broccoli's been around since the dawn of time, but she <laughs> won't let it go. Uh, so, uh, you know, whatever makes her happy, uh, I'm game with. But that's there. That's our shade house. It's a bit of a mess right now because we got so much stuff going in there. But other than that, oh, last but not least, here we go. So here, this bok choy plant found its way into the ground. A seed found its way into the ground and decided to grow bok choy. So we're, we're going to let it do its thing. Uh, at least now we know that bok choy will grow in a sandy soil. This is straight up dirt from Florida, Florida dirt. I'm trying to get in there, but I can't because I only have two hands. But anyways, very surprised at what it's doing. Uh, we do have uh, some catnip here that's gone crazy. That's our catnip over here. We're just letting it do its thing. It loves being in this corner. And we've harvested most of the Swiss chard. That's what's left. Uh, we'll see if we get any of it coming back, but that's the last of the Swiss chard. We have some uh, Swiss chard seedlings growing. And uh, but the thing is, it's starting to get hot, so we don't think that's gonna work out too well, but we'll see how it goes. But anyways, folks, this is four weeks, or five weeks roughly, and here we are. Here we are with the garden, five weeks. I feel like we're doing pretty good. Uh, we still got the entire summer to go. So I'll be doing some more garden updates. And please, folks, please uh, let me know what you guys want to do with the 50-gallon. Do you want a herb garden? Do you want a corn? Or do you want potatoes? Let's figure out what we're going to do with this, folks. The next 50-gallon is up to you, the viewers. Either herb garden, potato, or corn. You be the judge. All right, folks. Well, I had, to, I had to get away from that sun. It's still cutting over my shade house, but I wanted to sneak back here and get some shade because it's hot out. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I truly appreciate that. Think anybody get any value out of this or who wants to participate in deciding what we do with this 50 gallon grow bag. Again, we're gonna go step by step once we figure out what we're planning. So truly appreciate you guys being here. And as always, be safe and know you are not alone.
This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in a rebound. God bless.